There are roiling international crises around the world, and President Trump continues to find ways to add to them, essentially, with self-inflicted diplomatic snafus for the United States. It may have been a long week, but consider it was just at the beginning of this week that few would have said, well, this is the time in the middle of the summer that the American president should get a public rebuke from, of all places, Greenland. But it all began with a report last night in The Wall Street Journal revealing that Donald Trump was using taxpayer dollars to put serious effort in trying to purchase what is basically a semi-autonomous region from Denmark. And now the government of Greenland issues this response saying, hey, we're not for sale. Now, this gaffe is the lesser, of course, of two international uproars that Trump created this week. And tonight, he is continuing to tweet about the U.S. congresswoman that he convinced the government of Israel, through Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to ban from visiting, reversing Israel's previous policy, because they were going to let them in until Donald Trump put on the heat. Now, this has been roundly criticized and has put the Israeli government basically on its heels. So today, here's the update. Israel reversing its reversal, sort of, and offering one of the congresswomen, Representative Tlaib, conditional entry so that she could see her Palestinian grandmother, who lives over in the West Bank region. The congresswoman, under these circumstances, after everything that's happened, is rejecting that conditional invite. And then you go hop over to Asia, where China's police force has been holding military-style exercises in an area near Hong Kong. Now, some see this as this effort to intimidate a pro-democracy movement there. President Trump, despite some entreaties inside America and from his own administration, will not lift a finger yet to support the democracy protesters, instead saying he hopes that they can all just work something out. Now, today, the North Korean government is testing a series of short-range missiles off its eastern coast. It's the sixth time they've done so in the last month alone. Now, these tests come less than a week after Trump lavished praise on Kim Jong-un and pledged to meet with the dictator again, citing a, quote, beautiful letter. I got a very beautiful letter from Kim Jong-un yesterday. He really wrote a beautiful three-page, I mean, right from top to bottom, a really beautiful letter. I'm joined now by Nayira Haq, the host of Sirius XM Progress and former senior advisor at the State Department. And also, we are joined by Maria Echeveste, a former deputy chief of staff to President Clinton. Uh, thanks to both of you for joining me on a Friday night. And Nayira, I wonder how big a problem uh, are these things in the category of things the U.S. doesn't have to do wrong or do at all uh, and is choosing to do under Trump uh, at a time when Americans are understandably following a lot of different stories. This stuff can, can get ignored or forgotten, and yet it seems to have potential uh, significance. Right. These are all self-inflicted wounds at a time when the world is already in crisis, right? You're looking at a worldwide economic downturn. Uh, we have 75 million people who are either refugees or displaced. That's a crisis throughout the Middle East, Europe, and we know about Asia now as well. And within that, Donald Trump, as a leader of the United States, ostensibly the leader of the free world, has the power of words and diplomacy and military strength. Unfortunately, he only seems to value the military strength and only values that when other people look strong as well. His words can be very powerful in this moment to help just calm the waters. Instead, the language that he uses, the, the moments that he picks uh, really tend to inflame tensions and put our allies at risk. The North Korea example is the perfect one. He's flattered a dictator. He has not actually signed any negotiating deal other than personal promises in love letters. And now you have these missiles that have been tested that are more accurate, that our military says are harder to shoot down and that directly threatens South Korea and Japan. Maria, what is the uh, fallout or accountability, if anything, for the uh, unusual move regarding uh, the president asking Israel to help retaliate against domestic opponents? Um, is that an abuse of power? Well, it certainly seems it's unprecedented. The reality that um, he is now signaling, signaling to dictators and autocrats across the world that if they have a problem with a U.S. official, um, they can refuse entry. We have, de for decades, developed a reputation for having the high ground. Yes, we've made mistakes, no question about it, but we were a beacon of democracy, of process, of um, facts, of truth. And what this president has done 
by intimidating Israel and then having this latest um, uh, reversal by Israel is really shown the world what Michelle Goldberg wrote today, that President Trump is playing Jenga. You know, the game where you pull the pieces of wood and then it becomes unstable and everything falls apart, except it's, it's, it's the world. And what it reflects, every single misstep, if you look at North Korea, if you look at Hong Kong, it, it is a lack of intellectual curiosity. Someone who believes so strongly that he knows everything, and unfortunately, that man controls our Department of Defense. He's the commander in chief. And was the leader, is the leader of the free world, right? I bet many of our allies are extremely concerned about what the president is doing. Between the economic concerns, uh, we haven't even talked about Kashmir. What is going on around the planet should give all of us tremendous concern. Nayira, go ahead. Oh, and it, it, the challenge is that it's, it's affecting U.S. interests overseas. So clearly our ideals and the American brand and reputation have been degraded under Donald Trump. But when we're looking at American interests in the Middle East, you now have people uh, organizing and looking to have movements. For example, the Germans uh, discussing what they're going to do in the Strait of Ormuz, and they're not talking about coordinating with the U.S. anymore. You have India, as Maria mentioned, uh, who has completely just violated international accords, moved into Kashmir, uh, and you now have two nuclear power countries that could potentially go back to war over an issue they have fought over before. Again, Donald Trump, the United States, absent from all of this, which indirectly and directly will come back to harm American national security and the American consumer. And Maria, it's uh, Friday night in 2019, so I guess my last question to you is, uh, should we buy Greenland? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, as many have written, um, this man... Uh, makes foreign policy by Twitter. Um, it's whatever comes into his head. Um, and the fact that um, we're actually talking about this ridiculous idea, um, to me, is just we need to let people know that um, the president may be delusional about what can be done. But we are a democracy. We do have Congress. And I highly suggest that our members of Congress continue to look at what this president and his administration is doing. Um, and I would say what he did with Israel um, and with our two representatives really requires a serious consideration of if abuse of power, that is impeachable. Hmm. Uh, strong words on a, a rocky week for the president abroad. Anaira Hawk and Maria Echeveste, thanks to both of you. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.